actually, uh, but he wanted to just talk about freedom in Jesus Christ, and it's important for us to all to have it. Whatever problem you're facing, whether it be anxiety or fear or sickness or poverty or whatever the problem is, it, there is a solution in the kingdom of God, and that's what we want to look at. Anything that has bound you up, uh, Jesus has come uh, to set you free. Amen. And we're going to start with Luke chapter 4, verse 18. A very, uh, very familiar verse with all of us. A very powerful verse. It tells us why Jesus came. It was the Spirit of God upon him uh, to set the captives free. So I want you to read this. The, the Spirit of the, this is Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. So he came for that very reason, to, to relieve us of all of our burdens, to set us free so that we could go free. You know, it talks about uh, setting the prisoners free and setting the captives free. But uh, in reality, uh, John the Baptist uh, was a close relative of his, a, a man I'm sure he loved greatly. And he was put in prison and Jesus didn't ri raise up an army to go uh, release him from prison. So uh, he's really talking about something else. And, and it's about the things that hold us in bondage mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it's that spirit of god upon him that's going to release you and me uh from any type of bondage and i want to just talk about, think about them again uh, whether it be fear or anxiety oppression depression sickness uh, lack scarcity mm -hmm. uh re broken relationships whatever it is it's the spirit of god and the word of God that's going to free us from those things. And I know there's a verse that we all know, and it's uh, John chapter 8, and it says the truth will set us free. But uh, there's uh, some conditions that even go that Jesus talked about before that phrase, the truth will set us free. He talked about the word abiding in you. If the word abides mm -hmm. in you, and if you become my disciple, mm. then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So I could easily have uh, gone with a very superficial uh, message tonight. I could have read a few verses that we're free, and I'm sure that would have encouraged all of us. But I want to go delve a little deeper uh, than that and, and look at, where are the bondages coming from? What what are the bondages and how do we actually deal with them? We know that Jesus has come and it's by his spirit and by his word that he's setting us free. So let's look at John 8. I want you to read verses 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Okay, we have to abide in his word. In John 15, 7, of course, says that if you abide in me and my words abide, abide in you. So that it's that abiding where those where his word <laughs> is alive to us. And we it's a different living in a different realm, a different place where we live in in the word of God, then that word becomes alive in us and the word is living in us. And so that's a different realm than just simply saying, oh, the truth will set you free. We, we've got to be abiding in his word and be a disciple indeed. And, uh, and that's that, right. Uh, so it's it's important. and But it's not just the word of God. It's also the spirit of God. So I have this uh, verse I want you to read in Corinthians 3.17. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6, and then verse 17. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit brings 
the lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives, he's going to bring liberty there. But it also says it's not just the letter of the law. That's the reason I wanted to read verse six. It's not the letter of the law because it's just the, the not the mental accepting of the word of God because it says the letter kills, the letter of the law kills. It's by the spirit. So we're really focusing on the spirit here tonight because the kingdom is the realm of the spirit and it's the dominion of, of the Holy Spirit. And that's where the king rules. Uh, he has dominion in his kingdom. Now, obviously, when we're born again, we are set free from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, and so we need to go over a few verses here in Romans uh, 6 to just remind ourselves that we are set free from sin. But there's a lot of other things that we need to be set free from. Amen. So I want you to read these. This is where we start. Romans 6 verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Hallelujah. For you're not under the law, but you're under grace. And then verse 18 says, And having been set free from sin, you become slaves unto righteousness. Hallelujah. And verse 22. But now, having been set free from sin, and you have become slaves unto God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Well, I, I love that word too about everlasting life because that's and life today, today and tomorrow, tomorrow and forever. Ever. It's it's not just something that's beyond where we are. We can uh, bring the life of the age to come. We can bring it here. That's what uh, the kingdom is about, is bringing what's in heaven, bringing it and manifesting it on the earth. And one of the things we want to do with that is manifest the life mm -hmm. that, that we mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. in Christ in heavenly, in heavenly places. Hallelujah. So that's, it's important for us to realize that we are not a slave. We're not in bondage to sin. We, we're free. We've been made free by Jesus Christ, by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. And as we follow his word and we follow his spirit, then, then we don't have to sin anymore. Now, people do fall, they falter, mm. but we've all done that. And so let's just get ourselves up, confess our sins and move on. We are not in bondage to sin anymore. Hallelujah. And that, that is a good word right there. You know, there's a song that uh, uh, the places where we have been before, they have sung, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, no, that's wrong. I'm no longer a sinner. I am a saint. Uh, Jesus Christ has Amen. made Amen. me a saint. Hallelujah. I am a child of the Most High God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm no longer a sinner. Now, I was a sinner. I was a sinner, but I am no longer that person. I'm a new creation. That's what 2 Corinthians mm. 5 said. I'm a new creation. I, I never existed before. There, there's a, a an army that God is raising up that's Hallelujah. free from sin. Hallelujah. They don't think, oh, we just have to sin a little every day. No. No, we're a new creature. Mm. And, and we've been brought into a kingdom. If you're born again, you begin to see a different realm, a, a realm of the kingdom of God where you can bring heaven to earth. And Hallelujah. that's what Jesus that taught us to pray. He taught us to pray. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So what are we really talking about then? We're talking about bringing the things in heaven, bring them here on earth. Amen. You don't have to wait until you lay down this body and, and you go over there because Jesus brought a different system uh, down mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. that we can have we can have everlasting life and it begins today it begins in you Hallelujah. because you are a new create Let's new sing that. creature i'm a new, a new creation. creation i'm a brand new man old things have passed away i've been born again 
more than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. That's you too. Hallelujah. You no longer are you just a, a dirty old sinner saved by grace. You are the saint of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. New creation. Hallelujah. A royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Now, we have to get our minds renewed. There, there's a big difference. Uh, for us to be free, there is a big difference between having a renewed mind and an unrenewed mind. Yes, so, I mean. You're born again. That means your spirit is born again. You have a, a new spirit. And the father of lights and the father of spirits, he becomes your father. Uh, oh, hallelujah. It makes a big difference. Mm. If you're in the kingdom of God, you've been born again. You've been born of water. You've been born of the spirit. You can see the kingdom. You can enter the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom is the realm of the Holy Spirit where the fruit of the spirit uh, operates Hallelujah. and it operates in your life you know we've all come a long ways uh, since we've been here in these meetings together Amen. we found Amen. out some things that, that we are and you and by that i mean you and i god has something special for you he has created you in the image of his own dear son you're being changed from glory to glory, glory into the image of his dear son. Jesus. Oh, I'm excited about that. So we need the renewed mind because, we see, Romans 8 says that the unrenewed mind, and, and there are different ways to, to say it, but I'm just going to say it this way. The unrenewed mind uh, is going to lead a person down a path of destruction. But the spiritual mind is life and peace. That's what you have in the kingdom. I want you to read this. Romans 8, 6 and 7, <clears throat> for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Okay. So when we come to the Lord, our spirit is born again. But we begin a process that is in, involved over the rest of our life to renew our mind. Because when we first come to the Lord, we accept Jesus as our Savior, our mind is unrenewed. So we have to begin that process of renewing the mind. And if we don't do that, and there's a lot of Christians, they've accepted Jesus as their Savior, and but they're they, going to heaven. But they have not renewed their mind. And so they're not going to be able to function in the kingdom. They, they can function in the world. And they may be very mm -hmm. successful in the world. But they are dealing with all kinds of torment and turmoil in their personal life and mm -hmm. in their family life mm -hmm. because they haven't turned over. Uh, they haven't turned things over to the Lord and they haven't made him as Lord. Mm -hmm. There's one thing mm -hmm. to call Jesus Savior, but it's another thing to make him Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see Hallelujah. how to, to uh, renew our mind. We see this in Romans 12. And so a lot of this is very familiar to all of us, but I'm going to go deeper. And so hold on and, and stay mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned and to what we're going to talk about in a moment because that's going to be some new things. Okay. okay, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And do not be conformed. Remember, it says freedom to celebrate. That's the <clears throat> title of this message, freedom to celebrate. And to do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So renewing of the mm -hmm. mind is very important. It's a, it's a lifelong process, but we can save the soul. That's what James said. Hallelujah. But by, as we renew our mind, we're saving our soul. Our spirit is saved. Our spirit is born again. Once, once you come to, to the Lord Jesus, you, once you can call Jesus Savior, he becomes your Savior, then your spirit is born again. 
but then it's a lifelong process of renewing the mind. Mm -hmm. And why do we need to do that? Because the world, see, the world has been uh, programming all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, That's there, right. There's a political system, a government system, a, a religious, religious system. system. And, and all of that's been programming us, and that's been putting us in the bond, into bondage. All the world wants us in bondage, wants to control behavior and manipulate people, control people, and, and that's where the bondage is. And that's that's what we're going to next. We're going to be. I want to finish that scripture right there. It okay. says that <laughs> to renew our minds, that we may prove. What is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? Okay. And we want to be in that perfect will of God because that's what moves us forward. That's what moves us into purpose and into destiny. And that's that's what makes us doers of the word. Okay. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, Jesus gave us three parables about leaven. Leaven. And uh, one of them is positive and two of them are negative. And, and so let's think about what is leaven. Well, it's, it's yeast. And if you're making some bread, for example, uh, you have some dough, uh, you put some wheat and uh, some flour and water and, and some different ingredients in it. But then it, to make that bread rise, you put some yeast. You just put a little yeast. And then it says in a little while that yeast is going to be throughout that bread and it's going to rise. Right. And that leaven. Okay. But now leaven can be something good or it can be something bad. And if you put a little leaven into anything, after a while it's going to leaven the whole lump of dough. That's, mm -hmm. that's something that mm -hmm. we see. You just put a little leaven in. Okay. So there were three parables that Jesus talked about. He said, First of all, he talked about the parable of leaven in the kingdom. Now, leaven, uh, in this case, is, is something good. And so we, we begin to uh, understand what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom is the fruit of the Spirit. It's The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's the realm of the Holy Spirit where much fruit is mm. being produced. And that can... Uh, if you begin to understand the kingdom, you begin to see the kingdom, and you can only do that after you're born again. Right. But as you begin to see the kingdom, you begin to focus on the kingdom of God. That's the realm of the Holy Spirit. Then, then that's going to affect your whole life. It's going to change the way you operate. Because before you come to Jesus, you're programmed by the world system. And that's putting a different kind of leaven inside of you and the leaven is about your attitude it affects your your attitude and it your thinking your, your thinking and affects your uh all your behavior uh and so it can be positive if it's the kingdom but it can be negative if it's coming from any source other than mm, the, the kingdom. kingdom of god and uh so in uh, matthew 13 he talks about the leaven of the kingdom and then we're going to talk about the leaven of the world. Okay, so. Okay, Matthew 13, 33. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Okay. And so he wants the kingdom to be in all parts of us. Every. You know, we're made up of three parts, a spirit, a soul, and a body. And he wants the kingdom leaven to infiltrate, if you will, or be distributed throughout our whole being. Okay, that, that's our life. That's, that's when we go to work, when we go to the marketplace, when we when we deal with our uh, spouse or our children or, or our siblings or whatever, That it's all about the kingdom. Begin to operate in the kingdom. So as you get a little bit of a glimpse of the kingdom, and you begin to see how big it is and how important it is in your life, mm -hmm. then, then you begin to l l let it dictate your what you're going to be thinking about and how you're going to be acting, how you're going to be treating other people. It's all according to the principles and operations of the kingdom of God. You start with mm -hmm. a little bit, it's going to infiltrate your whole life. That's right. But Jesus said, 
We also need to be concerned about the world mm -hmm. uh, putting some leaven in there. Well, you ever watch TV or ever watch the news or ever watch a movie or, or ever read a book or ever read a news? All of that's leaven and it's coming in and it's bringing a different attitude uh, than the kingdom. So let's read what he said about the leaven of the political system and the leaven of the religious, religious system. system. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Herod, uh, Mark eight thirteen through 15. And he left them and getting into the boat, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them saying, take heed or beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod or beware of the worldly system and its leaven and beware of the religious system and its leaven. Okay, so they both they okay. both are motivated by the fear of men. Okay. The fear of men is the one overlapping common denominator of those two negative leavens, the leaven of the world and the leaven of the religious system. They they have this common denominator, and that is the fear of man, the fear of men. Okay, so let's think about how the political system, our government, how it operates. It's all based on humanism and the uh, it's all about the system of man. And uh, it's okay in our government, for example, it's not true for all governments around the world, but in our government, our political system, it's all right for you as an individual to have a relationship with God and, and to... Uh, and to carry your Bible and to do prayer meetings and, and have Bible studies, yeah. But the political system doesn't want you to bring God into a government or into business or into uh, education. Okay, so in some governments, they tolerate your uh, having a relationship with God, knowing God but they don't want you bringing your God into their world, uh, not affecting their government, their political system, not their uh, education. Uh, and I've seen that over my lifetime. It used to uh, had prayers in the schools. Well, they took those out. They, they had the, the Ten Commandments in courthouses and, uh, and they took that out. So you can see that the world system and the political system, it's getting further and further away from God. and But it'll tolerate in many cases. But there are some governments that will not tolerate uh, people having a relationship with God or putting uh, emphasis on God. Uh, but we're, we are fortunate in this nation. And of course, the 4th of July is coming up in two days. And that mm. uh, when this nation was founded, it certainly uh, uh, rep. rep Re what's the word here? Recognize. Yes, recognize, recognize God and uh, allowed God, the existence of God, and for people to fellowship and have and a freedom of religious uh, activities. Now, when I talk about the political system, then I'm talking about the humanistic system, and basically it's trying to isolate itself from God. But now the religious system is all about God, but I call it different than the kingdom because the kingdom is about the Holy Spirit, the realm yes, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the, the religious system that Jesus is talking about is, is the system where they talk about God. They know God, but they don't allow his spirit to move. So mm -hmm. there's, you don't see the demonstration of the spirit in the religious system. So it's about God and it talks about God, but doesn't allow God to move in their midst. And, you know, uh, they can There's be no grieved. freedom there. They, there's <laughs> no freedom. We're talking about freedom today uh, because they they may grieve the spirit. They may quench the spirit. So however they do it, but they're still very much trying to control the behavior of people. But see, in the kingdom, uh, it, it's not about your behavior. It, it's not really. It, it's about your relationship uh, with the Lord. I mean, so remember, he said, you beware of these systems of the leaven 
of the political system, of the leaven, of the uh, religious system where the Holy Spirit is not free. Because it says they're going to put burdens on you. Mm -hmm. It's going to control you, control right, your yeah, behavior. Yeah. Wants robots. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, don't have that <laughs> verse about uh, uh, burdens that... Uh, yes. Matthew 23, 4. Woe to the scribes and to the Pharisees because they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's or women's shoulders that they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. They will not even lift a finger to move a burden off of you. Okay. And that is that is the what they try to do. Okay. So I don't know. Have you ever felt bound up? Have you ever uh, been anxious about things and fearful about things or have doubt and unbelief or have you had sickness or lack or any of those things? That, that's all a bondage. It's all related to bondage. And Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, that we might have freedom. And there's freedom in his word and freedom in his spirit. And by his word and by his spirit, mm -hmm. you are set free. And so I want to talk about, well, how do we get free then from these this bondage? And we've all, the world wants you under bondage. Uh, I've, I've experienced it a lot in my life, and, and I've had to be released and freed from a lot of different areas. Uh, and certainly fear of man has been a part of that. Uh, but uh, And uh, uh, poverty, a spirit of poverty, a lot of different things. But, uh, but the Lord has been set, freeing me from those things. It's like an onion. Uh, don't think, okay, I just pray a prayer and I'm free of all of that. Yeah, an onion has many, many different layers. Many layers. That's, that's what the what the world has done over time, and and a lot of it has been very subtle, uh, and and you might not have known it when it was happening, but it was like a layer, and it's just putting a uh, layer of layer of bondage upon us, and we have to get the bondage off. Now, what I'm going to talk about next is the application. How do we get rid of the bondage? Uh, whether it be mm -hmm. doubt, unbelief, anxiety, fear, whatever it is, how do we get rid of it? Well, let me say this, and, and it was a lesson I learned early. You cannot control flesh with flesh. And, and you might say, oh, I, I've got fear, and I'm just going to get a hammer and hit myself overhead every, every <laughs> time I get uh, fearful. No, or I get anxious, I, I just hit myself on the uh, hand with a hammer. No, you can't do natural things to control uh, these bondages that you have. And so how do you get rid of them? Well, it's a simple principle by producing the fruit of the kingdom. Ooh, hallelujah. Uh, you, mm. you know, uh, Jesus said, if we don't mm. produce the fruit of the kingdom, the kingdom will be taken from us. In other words, oh, wow. we won't have peace and joy and love and patience and mm. kindness. Mm. We won't have those things if we're not producing the fruit. And we have to recognize that Jesus is within us, Christ within us. That's the hope of glory and being led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. But here's the real uh, verse, the core of this, how to get rid of these uh, negative things. All the negative things, any negative thing in your life can be removed, but you cannot remove it by your flesh. You overcome it with the Spirit of God. And here's the principle here in 1 John 4. It's a very important point. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Okay, so for every negativity in your life, every negative thing in your life, anxiety, depression, anger, uh, uh, just worry, 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 doubt, unbelief, all, every one of those can be overcome by producing a fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. a fruit mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Amen. For the kingdom is the fruit. It's mm -hmm. righteousness, mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. and joy. And if you are not producing the fruit, see, you, you don't get to 
operate in the kingdom. Oh, in the wow. kingdom, that's where you have love and joy and kindness and and peace. Uh, you, peace. You begin to operate just like God because that's the nature of God. And that's where you're being conformed to the image of Christ. It's in the kingdom by producing the fruit. It's not by doing natural things. It has nothing to do with natural things. It's by the Spirit. It's the realm of the Holy Spirit. And so if you want to eliminate negativity in your life, any area of negativity, every area of negativity, you do it not by mm -hmm. focusing on that negative thing, and trying to get a hammer to it, beat it over the head with a hammer. No, you focus on the fruit. You focus on Jesus. You begin to enjoy your relationship with Jesus. And that's the reason I said celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Celebrate Jesus Christ. You begin to enjoy him. Enjoy your time with him. It It's not about uh, legalistic uh, things and schedules. And I have to pray 30 minutes or I have to... I have to read my Bible for 30 minutes or I have to do this or that. All of that's legalism, legalism. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said, beware of legalism. Yeah, yeah. Beware. So, yeah, we'll put so, some leaven in there. So, so this is something we all have to be aware of. This, this is a message for all of us. And you might say, well, I've, I've overcome all of those things. Well, there's something out there that is still working and trying to put you in bondage. Uh, the freedom comes from operating in the kingdom of God Hallelujah. and just enjoying your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you can spend time with the Lord and, and never open your Bible and never utter a word. You can go in there and just enjoy him and celebrate who he is mm -hmm. and what he's done and give him thanks. Amen. Give him mm -hmm. thanks. See, if you're not giving the Lord thanks for what he has done, then you're missing an opportunity to enjoy who he is. And the freedom. And the freedom. See, you get bound up mm -hmm. if you're not thankful. Oh, if you're not, th you know, Romans talks about people who were not thankful and their minds became darkened. Wow, wow, wow. Their wow, minds, wow. let me say that again, their wow. minds became darkened. But they went back into an unrenewed mind. Oh my goodness. Because they were not thankful. So the mm. bottom line of this mm. message is celebrate Jesus and just think about him and produce that fruit and focus on that. Don't look at all the negatives and, and uh, get a hammer in your ha hand and think, okay, I'm going to get the uh, rid I'm of this squash, fear. Yeah. I'm going to squash this fear. I'm going to uh, squash this anxiety. No, you focus you focus on the fruit. You focus on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You focus on the uh, Holy Spirit and let the Holy, listen to the word, listen to his word, and listen to the spirit. Let the spirit lead and guide you and, and focus on him. See, we don't overcome the flesh with flesh. We overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our life until the death and yeah. the fruit you eat more and more of the fruit, produce the fruit, and Jesus will come to your garden and he'll spend time with you. If you're if you're producing love and joy and peace, you your household is just filled with peace and joy, then, then Jesus is going to come to your garden. He he wants to yeah, he wants to partake of your fruit. Mm, mm, he wants good. to partake of, of your, your fruit. fruit. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. It's good. But, but I tell you, if you're just an old sour grape, mm. <laughs> I don't know how, how Jesus is going to respond mm, to an mm, old sour mm, grape. Mm, mm, and uh, because he wants to produce, he wants to taste good fruit. Good fruit. And so that's what we need to be focused on. Amen. We don't need to be focused on getting rid of all the uh, bad stuff. We need to be focused on the good stuff, on Jesus Christ. Mm, celebrate. On celebrate Jesus Christ, what he's done in your life, and be thankful for who he is and what, and what he's doing in your life and the things that he's done and the things he's going to do. Just be thankful. Amen. It's a time Amen. to celebrate Hallelujah. Jesus Hallelujah. 